there's a lot going on today. We're pretty consistently going to hit uh, all four sports, which is pretty great. And we're going to start with the D-backs, Wolf, because even when I heard the Jim Bowden thing earlier this week where it's like, hey, don't sleep on the Diamondbacks for Jordan Montgomery, I was like, all right, Jim. That's Jim, what are you good doing, stuff. Jim? <laughs> sure. so good. I'll just go out and sign Jordan Montgomery when teams like the Red Sox and the Yankees are trying to get him. Jim, here's a click or two for you right here, <laughs> right? Uh, just amazing right now. Jordan Montgomery, Basonians, is an Arizona Diamondback. And can you hear the chips? Can you hear the chips being slid and pushed across the table? Isn't that right, Kenny? Ken Kendrick, of course. Oh, my goodness, man. I, I, stunning when this news came down. And, you know, like happens so much of the time, base earnings, as I pull the curtain back. Russ, that being Mal, of course, texted me, Jordan Montgomery. And I was like, what? <laughs> You know, uh, look, I'm busy. I'm doing some things here. And suddenly, Jordan Montgomery is going to be a di- – that blew my mind because I never saw it coming. Well, it just it, – it does so many things, and we'll jump into all of them throughout the show. But, I mean, the, the first – let's just go with the, the on-field. Setting aside the ramifications, what it means, you have – your payroll is like your team that spends money now. You've, you've changed. You've done that. What is that message <laughs> – to your players, to players around the league. To pe- what about the simple fact that their rotation, and, and I get that this probably won't be in this order, but it's Zach Gallen, Merrill Kelly, Jordan Montgomery, Eduardo Rodriguez, Brandon Fott. When, <laughs> when everybody's healthy and good to go. So wait a minute. You're telling me Brandon Fott is your number five? I, I mean, they <laughs> they may move it around, right, because you don't maybe don't want the lefties back-to-back, but whatever. No, of course. I'm but just there's... saying right now, yeah, they're going to they're gonna go ahead and, I'm sure, mix up the rotation. What a beautiful thing it is that you've got that. You've got uh, these guys now that uh, you've got an even balance, I would say, for the most part, in regard to right-handed and left-handed pitchers coming out, starting in your rotation. For me, it puts them in the top four rotations in baseball if not the top two it puts them in the conversation to at at any given point in the season you know be right there as the best in baseball now Jordan Montgomery is probably not going to make his first couple starts because he hasn't been pitching you know because he was waiting to sign with the team and Eduardo Rodriguez is out right now um this might just be me I I didn't see that move yesterday as we're going to go get this guy because Eduardo Rodriguez is out for a long time but I know a lot of people had that initial reaction of like oh that's Wait, does that mean Rodriguez is out for a while? Yeah. That's, I mean, I guess that could be the case. That's just not how I saw it, Wolf, because they wanted Jordan Montgomery at the trade deadline last year. To me, they've been working on getting Jordan Montgomery, and they got him. Right. It's almost separate. Yeah, once again, this is the way that I'm reading this, the way I'm understanding this, based on earnings. If he makes 10 starts, he comes back for a second year. Correct? That's the way I'm reading that right there. Mel, would you say that is the right way to say that that's how i'm reading that's it. what i'm saying it's a little bit dicey right now anyways well, he makes more money he makes 20 million for 10 starts but you're right that would be in 2025 if he did that so yeah correct yeah. okay yeah so in 2025 so once again um i love this because it's not just focused on this year not just a one-year con- if it was a one-year deal it'd be absolutely fine to yeah. be with me i no. wouldn't have any objections whatsoever isn't that right freaky mike hazen the, the biggest thing i'll just read freaky mike hazen wheeling and dealing mike hazen will be on the show at 11 45 today so we'll get uh we'll okay. get some answers here ahead of i mean he's gonna be on anyway because opening day is tomorrow but yes. now it's like hey mike we, we're gonna have to talk to you now because of, <laughs> because of these things you're doing I mean, what are they what are they thinking in Boston or St. Louis or these these teams that are traditionally spenders that needed Jordan Montgomery, quite frankly, more than the Diamondbacks did? Yeah. And yeah. the Diamondbacks, I mean, they if you're going all in, go all in. You can't you can't push all your chips to the center of the table, but then keep a couple and go like halfway all in. There's no point. If you're going to go all in, go all in. And, man, they are going all in. It's truly amazing. It it really is. That was my very first thought was Kenny, Ken Kendrick, of course, talking about how this is going to be the highest payroll in the history of the Arizona Diamondbacks. He called his shot he did. right there. But we all kind of felt like it was over for the most uh, part. Because they already went out and spent. And and I would, I would add this um, addendum to the going all in. My favorite part about this is – they haven't given up anything from the future. 
They haven't traded away, even going back to last year, anything from the core that they were using. So maybe going all in isn't even the right terminology because it's not like it's different from the Suns, right? If the Diamondbacks don't win the World Series this year, nobody's gonna be like, "Oh, you shouldn't have gone out and tried to sign Jordan Montgomery." Yeah. And, and Edward. it's gonna be like, "Okay, you, you went for it. These guys probably be back next year anyway, and you still have your young players." With the Suns, there's that edge because you gave up all your young players to bring yes. these guys in. So it is, I think, very different. Man, how do you think Diamondback fans are going to respond to this right now? Because we all understand the Arizona Diamondbacks are a mid-market team right there. For me, it is going all in. When you say, we're going to go ahead and just blow the lid off our salary structure and our payroll that we've had here for a long, long time. And now all of a sudden, this is this is an admission by the Arizona Diamondbacks. We have a still point moment in front of us right now to to gain some sports leverage in this town and and do something about it, not just this year, but in years to come. I think they see the opportunity to see, you know, this town, you know what Phoenix is like, you know what Arizona is like. Everybody comes here from all over the country, mm-hmm. right? So you've got all of these loyalties that are out there. You This is a bandwagon town. It is. And yet, once once you jump on that bandwagon, they're going to be there. It's it's an easy group to root for, too. If they they really, I mean, if they're going to follow up last season with something similar this season, it's an easy group to root for because they're exciting. They're fun to watch. It's a lot of good people in the organization. You don't have to kind of like have in the back of your mind like, yeah, but do I really want that person to win as a person? It's an easy group to root for in terms of the people that they are. And and look, I think a lot of people, even if you come down here from Chicago or Seattle or wherever, you still want the Dodgers to lose. And the Diamondbacks are probably the only (laughs) team that can do that. (laughs) They they are built to make the Dodgers lose. Look, you said it right there. They saw an opportunity, and they're going for it. I think that goes beyond baseball and sports and life. And I think we've all probably had a moment in our life where there was an opportunity. We didn't go for it, and it sucks. It's like the biggest regret you can have. You see an opportunity – go for it and they're going for it and I and I hear what you're saying as far as like capturing the market but I think just simply in baseball terms too they they built a team that's on the rise supplemented with some good veteran pitching yeah and once again what is also in the headlines for the Arizona Diamondbacks right now the stadium issue of course and what is going on and what are they gonna do and you know what this is the best thing you could possibly do is win if you want if you want um, goodwill, <laughs> so to speak, in regard to making these improvements for the Arizona Diamondbacks and the organization, man, winning cures everything for the most in professional sports. Yeah, it does. Yeah, win, and it's right there. I mean, the opportunity is right there, and you would. You would regret it forever if you were the Diamondbacks if you didn't go in this season and then it was just kind of like, oh, yeah, we were probably a pitcher away from winning the World Series. Like Mike Hazen felt that way last year. Yeah. How many times did he say that on the show? But I think last year it was understandable because they tried. But now it's like, hey, the opportunity is there, and they not only have gone out and gotten one, they've gotten two of these guys. Uh, you can make a case Jordan Montgomery was better than Eduardo Rodriguez. Thanks for watching Wolf and Luke. Tap to see more and click the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.